Hi everyone, here are the latest features added to Metro Mapmaker in version 7.1, which is scheduled to release on January 15th, 2025. It's a big update and I think you're really going to like all of the new features, and some of them were requested by Metro Mapmaker users like you. You might remember that version 7, which was released in November 2024, added the ability to mix and match line widths and line styles, and I wanted to build on that by adding lots of new line styles to play with. Many of these line styles were inspired by a book that I've been enjoying over the last year, Transit Maps of the World by Mark Ovenden. It's really fun to flip through the pages and see many of the different designs used in cities all over the world. So if you're watching this, you'll probably enjoy the book too. This first new line style is a London overground style, which I've named Hollow Open to be a bit more generic. This line style has been requested a few times by Metro Mapmaker users like you since the version 7 release, so I really wanted to prioritize it in this update. The next new line style is very similar. It's the Hollow Open style, but filled with a lighter version of your chosen color. This style is called Color Outline, and it's inspired by a few maps that I saw in Transit Maps of the World of Minsk and Cairo. Some ways you might use this style could be to show a section of a line that's under construction, or maybe one that has different levels of service at different times. Color Outline looks good with most colors, but if your chosen color is very dark, your line might just look solid. And if your color is very light, your fill color might look too faint to notice. The next new line style is similar to the other hollow lines, but these ones are capped with a flat edge. I'd originally thought of using a rounded cap to the line, as you can see in this screenshot, but I think the square looks better. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll also admit that I don't really love the way the lines overlap on themselves here in green, and it really makes me want to prioritize some improvements to this in a future release so it draws as a single connected line. This line style is called Wide Stripes, and it was inspired by maps like Cologne's, which uses it to show its S-Bahn and regional bond systems. I actually made a couple of different variations of the stripes, and this one is inspired by Athens. Here's the third stripe variant, and the inspiration for this style also came from Transit Maps of the World. Like with the hollow lines, I do want to improve how the lines connect to themselves, especially when a horizontal or vertical line connects to a diagonal line. I do want to get that looking good in a future release, but I don't want to make you wait too much longer for version 7.1, so we'll get to that later. This line style called Dashed Uneven is inspired by a Paris metro map that I saw in, well, you guessed it, Transit Maps of the World. It's something like a hybrid of dashed and dotted lines, and I really like the way that it turned out. I'm curious to see how you end up using it in your maps. The eighth and final line style added in version 7.1 is dotted square. Whenever I'm adding a new line style or a station style, I try several different variants and I often start over because I want them all to look really good in your maps. I also try really hard to think about how they'll be used in combination with one another. So this can mean sometimes that the updates take longer than I'd like, but I, I really do think it's worth it because we get a better result by the end. And I think that's especially true here. My first attempt at this line style didn't really look all that distinct from dashed lines, especially at the thinner line widths. And I wanted it to look like squares if I'm going to call it squares. So here's how it looks now in orange. And I think this looks really, really good. 
One frequently requested station style has been to add London style station markers. And I'm very excited to say that in version 7.1, you can now add London style stations to your map, or you can even change the way your map looks altogether in just a few clicks, make your entire map look like London. So here's Washington DC, but in the style of London. Now there's a few rules that London station markers follow that are a bit different than other station styles. For example, London stations at the end of a line will cap the line. But the biggest difference I think is that the side of the line that the notch appears on, that's going to depend on your station's orientation. And another thing that's different than other station styles is that London station markers are going to appear larger or smaller based on the width of the line that they're sitting on. So if you have a very wide line, your station markers are drawn larger. If you have a very thin line, the station markers are drawn smaller. London's transfer stations are drawn with a circle and they do connect. So if I want to show Roslyn as a transfer station that spans the orange, blue, and silver lines, I can add a station next to the one that I have. And remember, stations can have a space with a name. And as long as I make all of these transfer stations and London style, then they'll connect. While I was watching a fun time-lapse video of someone making a map in Metro Map Maker, I'll link that in the description, I noticed that the creator would sometimes draw some lines and add some stations, and then after drawing some more lines, come back and erase the first lines and stations, and then they'd need to re-add those stations over again. Now, revising and editing your map, that's a normal and expected part of any good map design. But I was thinking, can I make this easier for map makers? So here's a feature that I wish that I had made from the beginning of Metro Map Maker. It's called the Move Station tool. This lets you move a station after you've placed it. First, you choose your station. While the station menu is open and your station is selected, you can use the arrow keys to move that station along the line it sits on. You can also use the mouse to move stations by clicking the Move Station button or use keyboard shortcut M. Once Move Station mode is enabled, move your mouse to the space where you want the station to be and then click to move the station. Or if you click on a different station, it will switch which station is selected. Like you, I make a lot of maps in Metro Map Maker, and I'm often thinking about ways that I can make it easier. Version 7 added mix and match line widths and styles, and added the keyboard shortcut W to cycle through line widths, and the keyboard shortcut Q to cycle through line styles. That's, of course, in addition to the number keys, which let you change colors. But if you wanted to cycle through line widths, instead of having to hit W several times, what if you could cycle backwards? Well, now you can with Shift W. You can also cycle backwards through line styles with Shift Q. While I was working on new keyboard shortcuts, I wanted to make station editing much easier. While the station menu is open, you can cycle through label orientations with the keyboard shortcut O or backwards through the orientations with Shift O. You can cycle through station styles by pressing keyboard shortcut Y or backwards by pressing Shift Y. And you can toggle whether your station is a transfer station by pressing keyboard shortcut X. Remember that when you select a station, it will default to letting you edit the station name. So if you don't want to edit the station name, then hit enter before using your shortcuts. 
While making test maps, I often switch between different line widths and different line styles to make sure that everything looks good. You can, of course, choose which color you're using with the number keys. You can cycle through the line widths and styles with the keyboard shortcuts, or you could just click the buttons. But that could be a lot of button presses to get the specific color and width and style that you want. Could there be an easier way to do this? Well, if you've used any other image editing software, you're probably familiar with the eyedropper tool, which allows you to choose a color from an existing part of your image. In Metro Map Maker, the new eyedropper tool allows you to choose a line's color, width, and style from an existing part of your map. I've been using this so much in my test maps and I love using it. It's one of my favorite new features apart from moving stations. The look button is a minor addition, but it's useful in specific circumstances. When you first load a map and you haven't used the draw or erase or station tools yet, and you go to use the ruler, the ruler will move with your mouse cursor, and this can be really useful. But once you use the ruler in combination with the draw or erase or station tools, then the ruler will only update when you click and not when you move the mouse. It would be really useful if you could get the ruler to update when you move your mouse again, and that's where the look button comes in. If we click the look button, then now when we use the ruler, it will update as we move the mouse and not just when we click. One minor user interface change is that the add new line and edit colors and names and delete unused lines, all of these have been renamed to use the word color instead of line. And I think that's more accurate to how it's used now anyways. And while making that change, I thought it also made sense to move the Add, Edit, and Delete Colors buttons above the line size and line style sections into the section on line color so all of your color options are together in one place. I fixed a few bugs in the Search by City feature that was making it harder to find the maps that you were looking for, so now it should be much easier to find your city. This is a good time to mention that it's very helpful if you name your maps when you click Save and Share. And also that you should use the Identify Map feature when you're browsing and rating other maps. Doing both of these will help me categorize maps into the correct city and help others discover your maps. Some Metro Map Maker users reported that version 7 was very slow on Firefox. I'm seeing the same problem, and unfortunately it looks like a bug in Firefox. I've made the drawing a little bit faster in version 7.1, but it's still noticeably slow on some Firefox browsers, so if it's slow for you, I'd recommend using Metro Map Maker in a different browser for now. I'm going to be reporting this bug to the Firefox team, and I'm going to create a workaround fix but unfortunately, neither of those will be ready in time for the 7.1 release, and I didn't want to hold up the entire release for that. So if you're on Firefox and you're frustrated with the slowness, I hear you, I'm sorry, I'm working on it, maybe try a new browser for now. And I wanted to say special thank you to Isaac and Octagus for telling me about the problem. Sometimes bugs like this are really hard to find. For example, this wasn't a problem for me on Firefox on my Mac, where I do basically all of my development, but it was a big problem for me on Firefox for my Windows computer, where I do some of my testing. And so at first I thought I fixed the problem until I did some additional testing on my Windows computer. So thanks again for the bug reports. Thanks to everybody who reports bugs, sends in feature requests, or even just sends me your cool maps. I love seeing those. If you are subscribed to the blog, which you can check out at blog.metromapmaker.com, probably not much of this content is new to you. Maybe you've already seen a lot of this content in the sneak preview posts that I've been doing. 
But if this is new to you, you might like the blog posts that I've been writing. You can check those out at blog.metromapmaker.com and subscribing to email updates is always free. Okay, that was a lot. These are the biggest changes coming to Metro Map Maker version 7.1. And there's also a handful of other smaller changes and bug fixes not really worth mentioning in this video. Looking ahead to version 7.2, I have a few ideas in mind for what I'd like to do, but I'm also planning to send out some surveys asking Metro Map Maker users like you what you would like to see in the next update. So if you want to drop your ideas for what you want to see uh, in the comments, that would be awesome. Also, if you subscribe to the blog, you'll have a chance to tell me what features you'd like, what you'd want me to build next, that sort of thing. Thank you so much for watching and happy map making. I really look forward to seeing your maps. I look forward to seeing how you use the new features and please send me your favorites. Thanks so much.